Stock markets fall for the third straight session for the first time in three months. IT stocks take a beating. Midcaps relatively outperform the blue chips. Aditya Birla Group makes another big consumer push, launches a new financial services digital platform called ABCD. Hopes to add 3 crore new customers in the next three years. Kumar Mangalam Birla also announces plans to start the jewellery retail business with an outlay of 5,000 crore rupees. India's Met Department expects not only an above-normal monsoon, but also predicts that the rainfall will be well distributed, fueling hopes of a rural demand revival. Hello and welcome to Markets Forward, your go-to program where we aim to get you everything you need as we wrap up today's session and prepare for the next one. And the next one happens to be the day after tomorrow being a stock market holiday here in India. I'm Prashant. With me, my colleague Reema Tendulkar. Reema, hi. Hi, uh, Prashant. Uh, and let's get the show started. We've got you covered for the next 20 minutes with all the big news, key developments in the Lal Street, top corporate voices and the events to track ahead. But first, uh, it's a red screen. It's a red screen, but only for the Nifty. The broader market did very good. And uh, I think that's the key highlight, I would say. Uh, really vibrant screen. It was not everything down. Uh, it was not a sort of despondent screen by any stretch of imagination. The Nifty down about 100, 150 points in that range through the bulk of the session. Uh, and uh, we basically tested some important levels, which, uh, I'll, uh, which, which we should put out. So, you know, you look at retracements now because the daily averages are gone. Uh, the 20, the 40-day averages, etc., are gone. So how do you assess where does the market, fi you know, finish this leg of correction? The first natural point will be this 1,000, if you take this 1,000-point up move that we had from the lows of 21,710 to 22,775, which was the high, uh, the golden 61.8% retracement uh, stands at 22,117. We defended that today. We ended about 50 points above that particular level. So let's see if this means, uh, you know, something or... Uh, you know, that'll go. Now, Bank Nifty at the day's low, today's day's low, defended the 40-day exponential. So that is in better shape. But that is also, of course, because the Nifty Bank has done poorly as compared to the Nifty, is not done as well on the upside uh, as well. The That number is about 47,300. The, the low on the Nifty Bank today was only slightly above that. The problem in the US, right? I mean, S&P uh, e-minis are below an important technical level. Uh, and uh, a weekly close will be important to watch there. And if you do get that, I mean, I think maybe for the first time in many, many months, uh, the U.S. market uh, perhaps maybe uh, looking uh, at a bit of a pullback. And of course, uh, markets are awaiting this geopolitical uh, flare-up, the outcome. Of course, uh, Israel's response, they've said they've no uh, sort of uh, option but to retaliate. When, where, or how, you know, how big, all of that, of course, remains unknown. And tomorrow, of course, is a stock market holiday. But I mean, so when we come back day after, there'll be two days worth of global markets uh, to react to. Uh, that is, of course... Uh, a day after tomorrow. Prima. But today, global markets were in a tizzy. So yeah. Hang Seng, Taiwan, Korean markets, all of them ended with a cut of more than 2% each. Uh, but our, our markets have been weak for the last three trading sessions. So today's fall doesn't look as bad as what we've seen across the rest of the Asian markets. But perhaps we saw that fall take place on Friday and in Monday's trade. So in the last three trading sessions, the Nifty has fallen close to about 600 points. 22,753 is where the markets closed on Wednesday, last Wednesday. Then Thursday was a fr uh, holiday. And then in three days, we've fallen close to about 600 points. IT took uh, the biggest fall, the Nifty IT index down 2.5%. Yesterday, too, the index was down 1.5%. Infi, LTI, Mindtree, Wipro, HCL Tech, across the board, big cuts. On the gaining side, um, you had a couple of defensive names. So HUL, perhaps the prospects of a good monsoon, Titan, and HDFC Bank was solid as a rock. Uh, we'll talk more about individual stocks. Before that, here's a lineup of what we have for you in store. The top movers and shakers we shakers with Hormis. The stocks of the day were Exide, Bharti Hexacom, AD Capital, HDFC, AMC. We'll get you the key reasons why these stocks were buzzing in trade. And CNBC TV 18's popular segment, D Street Chatter, on the show, why Nimish will tell us why Coffee Day Enterprises was buzzing. And also the key market events to watch out for tomorrow and day after. But first, Hormis, it's over to you for the big movers. 
you are highlighting IT and there was a lot of support that was anticipated from the sector after TCS's results and sadly that was not to be. Neither it came about yesterday nor it came about today. In fact, the IT index even slipped below its 200 day moving average and as you can see there Infosys ahead of its earnings on Thursday ending at the lowest point of the day also having its biggest single day drop in 9 months in today's trading session. Emphasis, TCS, Coforge, LTI, Mindtree all contributing to the losses in today's trading session. What, but also did not do well though were PSU banks and most of the larger PSU banks were a drag in today's trading session, be it PNB, Bank of Baroda, Canada Bank, Union Bank and even SBI contributing to the nifty downside in today's trading session. But a pocket that did very well though within the broader markets was defense and those stocks were in the green today, be it Bharat Dynamics, HAL and the shipbuilders as well, Mazgao Dock, Cochin Shipyard ending at the highest point of the day and Paris Defense also having a good day in today's session. A stock that reacted to a block deal yesterday was Markson's Pharma and that is where the Massachusetts Institute of Technology picked up stake in the block deal yesterday. The stock ending 13% higher they did uh, Mankind Pharma, so good going there. Senko Gold extended its gains from yesterday's trading session. The stellar session yesterday, another 3% today. The stock crossed the 1000 rupee mark at an intraday high, but cooled off a little, but still ending 4% higher. Excite Industries, you'll talk about more during that as the show goes by, but another 12% today. The stock is up almost 50% now in the last 8 trading sessions. And lastly, a stock on the losing end that was Spark, another lower circuit today, the fifth straight lower circuit 20% down now in five trading sessions so not good going there for spark but overall a good day for the broader markets can't say the same for the index back to you okay all right uh almost thanks very much for that jay bala of cash the chaos is with us sudhi bandhapadhe group chairman at indy trade capital is also with us uh, gentlemen uh, good afternoon good to have both of you here jay is just to get the levels out of the way uh, should we expect any reprieve uh, a bit of a bounce here or uh, do you think uh, we test the recent lows from where this move started which is about 21700 yeah, I think a reprieve is due for the markets now, uh, Prashant. Uh, the, and I'm anticipating somewhere about 22,440 to 20, uh, 20, uh, 22,520. So that's the range in where this market is likely to face resistance. And if it were to turn much lower, it will signal that this market is much weaker than anticipated. But today's price structure from the April 10th high is signaling a potential for a market to uh, to have turned lower. Uh, so what the markets does uh, on, on its uh, reprieve bounds is going to be very crucial. Uh, uh, Jay, uh, you know, broader markets are, are, are still pretty pretty all right. Uh, you know, on odd days, um, advanced decline, and that's an important signal, right, for the health of the broader market. Uh, if, you, if you sort of track it over a period of time, uh, that's very healthy. So how does that tie in with, uh, with, with the, the, the index view, really? Yeah, uh, this is just a little bit of uh, bravado from the market. And um, we look, look at markets from the price structure point as well as momentum point. And uh, when it, I've, I've pointed out that the mid caps are okay. And, uh, you know, it's the small cap and the micro caps that's the problem. And, uh, you know, the mid caps have made new highs, whereas the small caps and the micro, micro caps haven't. But they've come very close to it. Uh, even if they were to make a higher highs, it will be an exhaustion uh, for the for the market, and they tend to uh, you know react much swifter when they react when they realize uh, you know the the markets have taken uh, 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 you know uh, 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 a, a misstep on the wrong direction. So you know I, I would anticipate uh, the, the uh, mid caps and the small caps to react more uh, pronounced once the the Nifty falls below the 100 day moving average and the 200 day moving average. Uh, Exide and Bharti Hexacom, these were the two stocks of the day. They rallied on the back of positive brokerage commentary. Namura has a buy rating on Exide. They believe the company's EV cells have received validation from the Hyundai Kia MOU, which was signed recently. And Jeffries has initiated coverage in Bharti Hexacom. Sudarshan joins in with details on these two. Sudarshan. So first I'll talk about Bharti Hexacom, which listed last week at the price of rupees 755 per share against the issue price of rupees 570 per share. Since then, stock was up 15% before today, and today it moved another 13% after Jeffries initiated coverage on the stock with a buy rating, and it has a target of 1080 per share. Jeffries says company offers a way to invest in those parts of Bharti Airtel's business that are growing faster. And over FY24-27, it expects company to 
to deliver 16% and 21% CAGR in revenue and EBITDA. Also, strong cash generation should drive deleveraging of rupees 5,500 crore. It sees net debt to EBITDA ratio reducing to 0.4 times by FY 2027. Next is Excite. On April 8, company had announced an agreement with Hyundai and Kia to, uh, to supply battery cells for Indian market. And since then, stock is up almost 50%. Today, Nomura has, uh, Nomura has returned on the stock. It has a buy rating and target is raised to 485 from rupees 233 per share. Nomura says EV sales get validation from Hyundai and Kia agreement and alliance with global companies, government support and EV traction might be key for the success. It is now more optimistic of companies' ability to win new orders from other global companies and considering all these, it has raised multiple to three times book value which will now be in line with global peers. Uh, Sudeep, uh, Bharti Hexacom, issue price was 570. The stock has gone up more than 50%. Do you share this kind of enthusiasm that we've seen on Bharti Hexacom? I think it's a, a definitely a good business with about 50% market share in Northeast and 40 plus in Rajasthan. And definitely it's a growing part. There's definitely opportunity for ARPUs to move up in this particular segment. Uh, and of course, customer additions are also happening uh, at the cost of Bhar uh, uh, Voda idea. Uh, so it's a good piece, very profitable, cash generating and will continuously improve. But I think the valuation, I'm, I'm a bit uncomfortable the way it has moved up uh, so fast post listing. Uh, there is uh, definitely, it's a fundamentally strong, but not at uh, 900 plus levels. I would rather have, uh, you know, somebody bought it uh, closer to the issue price or even uh, on listing, not at 900. LTA and Mindtree was under pressure after two global sales executives have stepped down and this follows a spate of senior level exits that we've seen since the merger which consummated close to about you know 15 months back we've seen number of exits but in the last six months it appears it's picked up a bit even the CFO Vineet Tere Desai had stepped down in March. Uh, the company is not only battling uh, you know these senior level exits but also growth for the company has slowed down materially and plus valuations have never been cheap but LTI Mindtree was always a growth company which is why they got higher valuations but now growth has slowed down and these exits have been an added worry for LTI Mindtree. So they, um, you know, LTI Mindtree, did you ever like it and what have you made of this recent slowdown in their growth numbers and um, do you think it will turn around once the discretionary demand starts picking up? Well, one thing is sure, it will turn around. In spite of the exits, they still have a strong management and a good pipeline of uh, uh, mid-level managers who can take over responsibilities. Uh, the overall IT scenario is a mixed bag. Uh, TCS numbers clearly showed that while overall they performed well, the North America and the BFSI wasn't doing well. Uh, so obviously a large part of India's uh, you know, IT company's business, uh, which is in North America, and uh, even BFSI, that segment is not doing well. And we have to keep that in mind while we analyze the results of other companies as well. As far as LTI Mindtree is concerned, I think, you know, the, 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 uh, you know this, all this excitement around the exits is temporary. I think uh, it has got a stable set of uh, uh, people handling it. And, uh, you know, as and when IT uh, demand picks up in North America, things will improve there as well. <clears throat> Got it. Uh, Jay, uh, you know, the, uh, from all, with all this geopolitics, etc., the one thing which <clears throat> many are watching is if it, uh, if something flares up more, uh, will oil go up and will that, uh, and that's a direct way that India gets impacted, right? Uh, you, don't want, you don't want oil substantially higher. What is your base case here for Brent? Um, let me start from the medium term. It's all anyway baked into the price equation that the uh, Brent we're going to see uh, somewhere about 250 in the next couple of years, probably some, somewhere sooner. The question was always, does is, has the move already started or has the move uh, yet to uh, you know take one tumble down and then come back? So we definitely are going to see uh, 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 you know 200 plus Brent in the next two years. Uh, so the very short term, I'm anticipating about 96 to 98 for Brent. And about 91 for WTI. So if uh, we see short-term price ex exceeding those levels, I think we go, we could see um, uh, much higher accelerated levels for uh, both varieties of Brent. It could be a policy misstep, 
or it could be an escalation of Middle East tensions. Okay, stay on. Now let's get to the top corporate story then of the day. Aditya Birla Group is making yet another consumer push. After the foray into paints, uh, the group has launched a new financial services. Uh, Aditya Birla Capital has launched something called APP, sorry, has called an app called ABCD to augment its digital services. The app will be a direct-to-consumer omni-channel platform selling various financial services products of the company. Nisha joins in with more details. Nisha. That's right, Aditya Birla Group, one of the large conglomerates in India, has traditionally been shy of directly uh, consumer-related businesses. In fact, barring uh, the telecom space like Vodafone Idea, it was mostly into nation-building, infrastructure-related companies like flagship companies of Ultratech and Hindalco. But over the last two years, probably also because of the trust of the science of the family taking a more critical and important role in the group, uh, the thrust towards consumer businesses has been strong. In fact, there's a list of announcements that they've made in just last two years to increase their focus towards direct-to-consumer businesses. Today's announcement has been of ABCD, Aditya Birla Capital Company, which is opening a platform for a plethora of financial services products under one roof. And Kumar Mangalam Birla at the launch did say that uh, they plan to acquire 30 million customers in next three years and want to become one of the top three players in each of the segments of Aditya Birla Capital. So that's a big one coming in. And Novel Jewel, the jewelry, branded jewelry business that was announced earlier for that outlay of 5,000 crore rupees has also been announced today. When we look at other brick and mortar and infrastructure related companies like Grasim, they forayed into paints business just recently, Birla Opus, with 10,000 crore rupees of investment. And remember, another uh, direct to consumer business has been in the fashion retail business ABFRL which has over the last couple of years and especially after COVID uh, incorporated Tomorrow which is a D2C brands business which acquired nine different fashion brands. So that's a direct to consumer approach in the retail brand uh, apparel space in a different category. When we talk about Century Textiles that came under the fold of Aditya Billa group recently and they had huge land bank real estate Billa S uh, estates is uh, the focus on that particular bit and they are constructing luxury residential properties under that but of course Vodafone idea cannot be forgotten one of the first experiments in the direct to consumer businesses it struggled had its own lifetime but today it is at 2.0 stage where it's launching a large follow-on public offer worth 18,000 crore rupees all right uh... <clears throat> Nisha, thank you very much uh, for that. So that's a pretty comprehensive wrap-out of what was said and what was sort of conveyed uh, today. Let's get you some uh, more voices, and uh, we'll kind of kick off with uh, AB Capital's, uh, AB Cap uh, Aditya Birla Capital's uh, Vishaka Mulye. She's, of course, CEO for the business, who said that the rate at which the NBFC borrows is one of the best in the financial services sector. That is AB Capital. She's talking about AB Capital. She added that they will focus on the merger of the NBFC arm into AB Capital, and will then later consider the listing of AB Sun Life once this merger is complete. Uh, we also had, moving on from corporates uh, to uh, the RAINS, uh, the Med Department's DS Pai, who joined us earlier, who said that uh, the IMD is expecting better than well distributed rainfall this year after a below normal uh, year that we had in 2023. Uh, he uh, said that uh, they are expecting the El Nino impact will be moderate and that will turn into a mild La Lina which actually is good for rains, but that's later this year once we get into the monsoon season. Let's get to HDFC AMC now that surged nearly 3% on the back of a bullish brokerage note where JP Morgan is bullish on the stock and has upgraded it to an overweight. Nimesh joins in with the standout brokerage report of the day. Nimesh. You know, the big standout was, of course, HDFC AMC, a big upgrade coming in from JP Morgan. They, today they've upgraded the stock to a buy from neutral and they've sharply raised the target price on the, on, on the stock to 44.50. Now, the key uh, you know, reason for the upgrade is that HDFC AMC has been gaining market share. And that's because of the good performance of the scheme. So that's been a big, uh, big change for, for as far as the JP Morgan upgrade is concerned. They believe that most of the uh, big, uh, you know, uh, 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 headwind seems to be out of the way now. The regulatory headwind seems to be out of the way, and the fact that uh, despite the mix, uh, they're able to manage the EBIT uh, at these levels. So 
that's been the reason why on, on FY25 and on FY26 estimates, uh, JP Morgan has actually raised the EPS estimates by 11 odd percent. So on back of all this, a big upgrade on, on uh, IGFC AMC to an overweight now from JP Morgan, and they've raised the target price now to 44.50. Uh, Jay, any uh, targets on HDFC, AMC, and also Exide, which is our 50% in the last eight trading sessions? Yeah, uh, see, uh, both Exide and Amar Raja, they are looking uh, extremely strong. They still got unfinished up moves uh, to work with. And, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, obviously, HDFC, I mean, uh, um, uh, Exide is stronger than uh, Amar Raja. When it comes to HTFC asset management, you know, it's probably uh, got a weakish up move pending somewhere closer to 4,200. But I will be a bit cautious here if it were to drop below 3,600. 3, I don't think uh, that move is coming. So, you know, I'm very hesitant long here on when it comes to HTFC AMC, but very bullish on both the battery names. Okay, uh, we'll leave it uh, there, Jay. Uh, good conversation as always. Sudeep, thank you very much for joining us here on the program with that perspective. With, uh, with that, it's, a, it's time for a quick commercial break here. We come back with the list of stocks that Nimesh has got his eye on. That's the popular D Street segment. Uh, we also have the top events to watch out for as we come back day after tomorrow. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're with us here on Markets Forward. Uh, over to Nimesh, who's standing by with uh, the D Street Challenge segment. Nimesh, what are you picking up? It was an extremely volatile and a choppy day of trade. Market ended at days low, but it was a large selling pressure as well, is what I understand from larger FIs. So that's the overall market. In terms of individual names, though, the first stock on my list is uh, uh, Coffee, Coffee to Enterprises. It's, been, it's come into my, into my list after a very long time. Big volumes on that stock. The stock was buzzing as well. I understand a very large leading influential H&I investor was a big buyer in, in that particular stock in today's market. The second stock is Crompton Consumers. Well, it's been a, a stock which has been consolidating of late. In fact, it's done nothing for the last two, three quarters. But at these levels now, I understand some large domestic mutual funds have turned active buyers in that particular stock. The third name is uh, Petronet LNG. Even that was buzzing in trade today on the back of the PSU basket. But here I understand some selling pressure has emerged. In fact, some large FIS seems to be selling after a big outperformance in that stock. And the last name is Samudra Madhusan. Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, again, this, there are the, the entire auto, dis, auto stocks did well today. Samudra stands out on very large buy flows. Interestingly, after a long time, the stock has actually crossed the last big block deal uh, price of 121, where Sumitomo had sold a large chunk. So after that, uh, you know, block deal, now it's the first time it's, it's crossed that. So a bit of buying has emerged in that name as well. Okay, thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, now let's uh, go across to Manglam before we wrap the show for the key events to watch out for Manglam. Well, the best event tomorrow is the fact that it is a market holiday. So that's something that you know everyone will enjoy, but don't wait for that because even tomorrow, there are a bunch of global data points that will be released, UK and EU inflation data. But after come back on uh, Thursday, you have Infosys results. So that will be extremely crucial to watch out for along with the management commentary out there. That is also the day where the Vodafone idea FPO, the 18,000 crore FPO, opens for subscription. That's uh, an important data point to watch out for. And today, of course, was the Nifty Bank and FinNifty weekly options expiry. On Thursday, we have the Nifty options expiry that will play out for 
will be important, especially given the downtick that we've seen in the market for the last couple of trading sessions. Right. Uh, Mangalam, uh, short and sweet. Thanks very much uh, for that. Well, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Markets Forward. Uh, uh, stay with us. We are back with more news and updates on the other side. Hello and welcome to Business 360. I'm Shireen Bhan. The headlines that we're tracking for you this evening. Stock markets down for the third session for the first time in three months. IT stocks take it on the chin. Mid-caps relatively outperform the blue chips. Crude oil prices rise amidst heightened tensions in the Middle East. Brent crude continues to hover around $90. Moody's Analytics warns that prices can cross the $100 mark if the Iran-Israel crisis escalates. Iran warns Israel of a painful response as the war of words continue. Israel calls for fresh sanctions on Iran. Israeli forces have promised to respond to Iran's drone and missile attacks. Al-Tibala capital has emerged as a key growth engine for our group. And I see this as a coming-of-age moment for Al-Tibala capital.